Tokyo is the largest city in the world. 39 million people live in this place, and yet, despite being so big, so many things here seem smaller. From cars, to buildings, to streets, and even its famous railway network. Look at the tracks beneath this train on the Biwako line in Kyoto. Yeah. Compare this to this Canadian freight locomotive, the tracks seem a little narrower, right? Why is that? Most of the world, the standard railway track gauge, or the distance between the rails, is 4 foot by 8.5 inches. In Japan, it's only 3 foot 6 inches. It's called narrow gauge. Typically, it's associated with the steam powered Rio Grande Railroad in the mid 20th century United States. In the 19th century, narrow gauge tracks extended 16,000 miles throughout the country. Or the vintage cable cars of San Francisco. Why is it everywhere in Tokyo, one of the most modern urban centers in the world? Japan started building railways in a period called the Meiji Restoration, when Commodore Perry and the black ships of the American fleet showed up in Edo in 1853, they forced the Japanese to sign a treaty, open trade to the outside world, or face utter destruction. Japanese society was in turmoil, it prompted a revolt against the military government of the shogunate by forces loyal to the emperor, and started a period of enlightenment led by intellectuals and industrialists who built Japan into a modern nation, ending centuries of feudalism and instability. The sudden appearance of Western nations that far eclipsed the Japanese in technology shifted the foreign policy to catching up with the rest of the world. If they could adopt these technologies and production methods, Japan would be on the same level as the nations that threatened them. Decades earlier, the British had invaded China over the opium trade. They forced China to open their ports to the European powers and ceded territory to the British Empire. This once great Asian superpower was outright humiliated in the course of a few years, and Japan took note. If Japan could level the playing field in technology and industry, they'd secure their sovereignty and a seat at the negotiating table in case Britain or the United States came knocking. But the visits by Commodore Perry and later British and Russian expeditions weren't all hostile. One of the first things the American fleet brought with it was a one-fourth scale model train demonstrating the triumphs of civilization, a sight commonplace back home. The train had a profound impact with Japanese officials riding behind the American locomotive next to the Yokohama reception hall. The message was clear, Japan needed a railway of its own. When the first railway linking Tokyo with Yokohama was conceptualized in 1867, the Japanese government appointed Edmund Morell, a civil engineer then working in British North Borneo. Morell had previously worked in Australia and New Zealand, and was familiar with the demands of colonial rail construction. For Morell, choosing a gauge was a no-brainer. Much like in the then British colony of South Africa, the Japanese rail network would be built in 3 foot 6 inch cape gauge, a type of narrow gauge that had already found success in Australia, New Zealand, and even the United States. Morell saw how little level ground he had to work with to build this railway. The narrow gauge meant that cost of building was far cheaper, the locomotives lighter and compact, able to sneak through rice fields, hills, and mountains, and was compatible with British and American designed rolling stock much like hundreds of other foreigners employed by the Japanese as technical advisors, engineers, and managers, Morel was no slouch. When foul weather halted work on the line, he'd personally invite Japanese engineers and surveyors to his house for lectures. So I'm out here at the old Shimbashi station. This is a replica. This is a replica of the station that they made in 2003. And it's kind of interesting because it's kind of situated in the middle of this like really modern public square. The line was opened on September 12, 1872, and work was already being done on more routes. A railway linking Kobe to Osaka, and eventually Kyoto and Otsu on Lake Biwa, was opened shortly thereafter in 1874. A similar route connected Suruga to Ogaki and Nagoya, linking the Sea of Japan with the Pacific. With the low cost of building the railways and the easy access to British and American locomotives, the narrow gauge was the right choice, allowing Japan to link its most vital cities in under a couple decades. By 1889, the vital Takedo mainline linked Tokyo with Kansai, cementing trade between the two regions for good. Japan was no longer a feudal society fractured by political, geographical, and cultural differences. It was a unified, globalized nation, primed for growth and prosperity in an uncertain turn of the century. I'm here at a JR Shimbashi station. It's also loud as fuck here. 
Even though it's a fairly modern place now, uh, this is actually one of the first pieces of railway history in this country. This actually used to be the terminus of uh, what would eventually become the Takedo Main Line. See, uh, Tokyo Station is about another two stops to the north of here. This actually used to be where the center of commerce and everything was. But it's kind of interesting to see that uh, we're here. They've commemorated this with uh, preserving a steam locomotive in this square, and um, it's a very significant spot. And uh, I don't think you'd be able to tell that now unless you looked at the signs. The city's really grown around it, and even though it's remembered its history, I think that there's a lot of places like this around the world that uh, are actually fairly significant spots for what most people would consider an insignificant part of history. So I'm going to look around a bit more. Edmund Morell didn't live to see his railway open. He suffered from tuberculosis some time before coming to Japan, and passed away on November 5th, 1871, at the age of 30. He's buried in the Foreign General Cemetery in Yokohama. Morell was pioneering these colonial railways in only his late 20s. A bronze bust of him sits outside Sakodagacho Station, the terminus of the railway he designed. While some Japanese lines were built to standard gauge, the 3 foot 6 inch railways remained a staple of Japan's rail network. This later became a blessing as Tokyo and Osaka grew into the super-populated dense urban centers we know today. Japan now has some of the most advanced narrow-gauge trains in the world, a gauge typically affiliated with tiny steam engines scaling treacherous cliffs in the Colorado wilderness. The E259 series trains on the Narita Express operate at speeds of almost 130 km an hour, as fast as the Acela high-speed trains on Amtrak's Northeast Corridor. When people say how the Shinkansen routes were built on broader gauge track, they were actually built on the global standard of 4 foot 8.5 inch gauge. Even in modern Japan, an established first world country, narrow gauge, designed once for freight railways in a frontier colony, reigned supreme. Morel's legacy is hard to miss. It's an interesting footnote in the history of one of the most unique countries on earth, and it's just one reason why Japan has grown into what it is today.